I wanted to ask you, uh, I, I've seen a stark difference between the last two drafts, last year's draft and this year's draft, uh, compared to the first four drafts that the 49ers have done. Do you see, do you see any changes um, in the 49ers strategy when it comes to drafting? I'll agree with you here. I, I do think there is a strategy in terms of, or I think the strategy is changing, and I'll say why. Over the first four years of the, or three years, I guess, of the Shanahan Lynch regime, the 49ers were inher- or they were inheriting a team that was really a really poor team roster wise. So, what do you do in those first couple of years? You have to get talent that can, uh, like, that can play immediately. I think that that's what came into the notion when you get those players. And also, they were picking higher, right? They were picking in the top tens, picking in the top five. Solomon Thomas, top three pick. Mike McGlinchey, top ten pick. Nick Bosa was the second overall pick, right? Those were the first three years of the regime. So you're trying to get the best, not necessarily the best players available, but you're trying to get immediate contributors because you want to get a product out there that showcases Kyle Shanahan's mind, right? Because the NFL, in my opinion, is a year-to-year league. Every coach at at some point is in jeopardy of losing their job because you need to you need to showcase results, right? We just saw it with Houston last year. I brought this example up uh, yesterday, but you see it with Houston. David Culley inherited a roster that was worse than the year before, and it was a lot of um, uh, turnover because there were 28 to 30 one-year deals that Nick Casario signed. Instead of getting worse, David Culley actually improved the team by an entire game and he got fired. So it shows that the NFL is a year-to-year league. You need to compete. So I think when the 49ers were first starting this rebuild back up again, uh, after picking at, well, originally they were picking at number two in 2017, they, they're trying to get these immediate contributors and then obviously trying to find gems in the late rounds that they can have high potential on. And those guys they hit on, right? You saw George Kittle in 2017. DJ Jones was in the sixth round of 2017. And then Fred Warner, obviously, in 2018, a third-round pick, and things like that. But over the past two years, the 49ers have built their base. They've built the talent already on the roster where they don't necessarily need to find immediate contributors, but instead guys that can help you now but also uh, can be long-term pieces. When you look at 2020's draft, Trey Lance is the epitome of that, right? When you hear from NDSU guys uh, surrounding Trey Lance, like his quarterback's coach, who was on with Jesse a couple weeks ago, he advised that Trey Lance take a redshirt year uh, in his freshman year uh, as a, a, in the NFL, just like Carson Wentz was advised to do, although the Eagles were too bad, so Carson Wentz had to start in week eight. So that's that's the different kind of the difference, right? Where now we're kind of building towards the future as well. Trey Lance, Aaron Banks, uh, Elijah Mitchell, in my opinion, were all picks for 2022, and Diamond or Lenore, because K1 Williams was a starter. Now, this year, we have a couple of those similar guys, right? Drake Jackson is probably an immediate contributor, but Ty Davis Price is also an immediate contributor. But Danny Gray, there's already a loaded receiver room where you have three options from last year and Ray Ray McLeod. So Danny Gray probably is wide receiver five going into the year. That's a, probably a pick for the future, even though he possesses something that can be an immediate con- contribution as well. Spencer Burford, in my opinion, is a little more of a projection pick. I think that's a pick for the future as well because we have so much depth. I think the fifth round pick uh, in Samuel Womack is also a pick for the future, right? You don't know if he's going to beat out Lenore for the starting spot, but he's got traits. Tariq Castro-Fields has traits. So that's, I think, the new philosophy. You don't necessarily need immediate contributors, but you're now looking for guys with the highest potential. I love it. You said it very, very well. I want to shout out some people in the chat. Melissa, what's up with you, girl? Thank you for joining us in. James, obviously, uh, throwing some uh, great questions our way. Good stuff. What does my shirt say? Let me take your comment off. It says, I'm not excited because I'm not. He's lying. But uh, <laughs> I'm always excited. It's it's the antithesis of my personality. But uh, I appreciate all of you guys joining in. I think um, you're absolutely right. I've seen a, a, a big difference in uh, the what the 49ers are doing drafting. One of the biggest things, Rohan, is I think they were taking – higher swings on potential and now i think they've really focused in on scheme specific guys that fit the culture and guys that uh, will immediately uh, be able to have a skill set specific to where they envision them playing and what i mean and, and also the second thing is they're not taking these risks on injury prone players anymore I, and that tend to be the issue um, with their earlier drafts is they would take guys that 
maybe had a high ceiling or had uh, had had a lot of potential, but had a lot of red flags, whether it be off the field issues, injury prone guys, things of that nature that ended up um, not working out. You know, as recently as three years ago, in a guy like Javon Kinlaw, right? So what I've noticed these last two years that hasn't been the case. They're taking guys who are healthier. They're taking guys that fit uh, a skill set that they need. And and just much to your point, they're not looking. They're not only taking guys that they need to have an immediate impact because of how well this roster has been built out from previous drafts and and talent that they're bringing in um, from the from free agency and whatnot. So I'm a big fan of what they're doing. I, like I mentioned, I, I keep bringing up the uh, um, the the uh, Patriots because I think the 49ers are really trying to build a dynasty where not only are they going to go out and be able to compete for a Super Bowl, win a Super Bowl, but be that way consistently for a very long time. And that's what I really like about um, about what they're doing. But.